Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk to you about the OSCP exam. Now, I know a lot of people who are working towards the OSCP exam are probably really nervous for the day that that comes because that exam is definitely not easy to pass, and there are a lot of things that could trip you up. So today I want to give you some advice based on my experience with the OSCP and PWK to help you pass the exam when that day comes for you. So the first thing I want to talk about is actually scheduling the exam. I think that's really when your exam process is going to begin. Now, it's important that you schedule the exam a few weeks in advance because uh, there can be a delay from when you're, you know, when you want to take the exam to when they have available seats open. So I'd recommend trying to schedule at least three weeks in advance, at least in, you know, around summertime of 2020 when I took my exam. That was about the safe spot to schedule in advance. You could find some times like, you know, say it was a Wednesday and you want to take it that weekend. You could potentially schedule for that weekend, but it would be at a really off hour. That's actually what I ended up doing. I wouldn't really recommend recommend doing it, but uh, usually you can do it. Just to be safe though, schedule a few weeks in advance. Now, when you schedule the exam, you can pick, you know, down to the hour of when you want your exam to begin. And of course, the exam is going to be roughly 24 hours long, and you really need to account for some time to sleep in that period, right? So you really want to figure out, you know, when you typically go to sleep and wake up. Of course, you might not be getting that eight hours of sleep during the exam. Uh, maybe six hours would be fair, but of course, that's going to depend on you. Now, there's really two different ways you can go about scheduling the exam around your sleep schedule. You could either start really early in the morning and try to you know, take the, the exam in one day, just in one sitting, or what you could do is you know, start the exam maybe later in the afternoon, like towards the evening, take half the exam, get a full night's sleep, and then take the other half of the exam. Right. So in my case, I actually I started my exam at six in the morning. Uh, so I was up at probably 4 a.m., which I, you know, I'm not used to doing. I usually just work a regular nine to five job. So it was it was very early to me and I could feel the effects of being tired when I started the exam. But it was nice because by the time I went to bed that night around midnight, I already knew I was going to pass and, you know, I could go ahead and sleep with a clear mind. So now let's talk about some things that you should do before the exam, right? So of course, the regular exam is going to be 24 hours, and then you're going to have another 24 hours to do the report. So I would recommend actually turning the OSCP into a three or four day event. So if you're going to be taking the exam over the weekend, I would book off, you know, Friday and Monday of work. Uh, Monday would I would consider optional, you know, that's just really going to be your recovery day, because you're gonna be exhausted after this whole process. But I would really recommend taking a full day off before the exam. So if you're taking the exam on Saturday, Friday, you should spend the entire day doing absolutely nothing security related, no computer stuff, I wouldn't be doing last minute cramming, nothing like that, right? The OSCP, it's a big mental game. And you really need to make sure that you're going into it with a sharp mind. The day before my exam, I spent the entire day playing Xbox, doing whatever I wanted to do, going to the gym, things like that, just things to really help me clear my mind and make sure I was kind of in like a zen-like state before I started the exam so that I knew I'd be sharp and be able to solve the problems on the exam. You also want to make sure that you get a, uh, a full night's sleep before going into the exam because, of course, you're going to be sleep deprived and you don't want to go into the exam already being deprived of sleep. No matter what time you're going to schedule your exam to start, whether it's early in the morning like I did or if it's late in the evening, I'd recommend having a full meal before you start your exam. That way you're going into it already full. You know, you're going to have a full night's sleep, have some caffeine, whatever you need to do. Uh, that way you're going into the exam and you're fresh and you're going to be able to sit down for a few hours without taking a break in those initial hours. Because really a bulk of the, the bulk of the work you're going to do is going to be in those first few hours. And that's, you know, you really want to make sure you get a good start in the exam. It'll help you boost Boost your confidence along the way as well. Now, I'd also have a plan for food, drinks, caffeine, things like that for during the exam because it's really a full 24 hour period that you're not going to be able to have time to go up and cook yourself a meal, right? So if you have a significant other who can help you with those tasks, that would be perfect. Or just consider ordering, ordering out and getting some takeout food delivered to your house or something like that, right? And also, before you take the exam, make sure to check your camera and uh, the proctoring software and stuff like that that they have before the exam date in case anything goes wrong. You know, God forbid your webcam breaks or you can't get the proctor software working or things like that. You really want to have that figured out in advance. I think they give you access to the proctor software a few days before your exam so you can get all that squared away and make sure that you do that. Also, before you take the exam, make sure that you know all of the rules, right? You should not be going into the exam. Can I use this tool? Can I use that tool? Is this allowed? Is this not allowed? No, none of that. You need to know all the rules to a T. Read those rules. 
10 times over if you have to, but make sure that if you take this in the exam and you spend all this time and money taking it, make sure you know the rules so you don't get disqualified and all of your hard work turns out to be for nothing. So now let's talk a little bit about recon, because of course all of the machines on the exam, you're gonna have to perform reconnaissance on. And this is something that, you know, it can really save you a lot of time if you do your recon well. You don't want to end up missing something obvious on a box, which leads you to not be able to root it just because you didn't perform your recon properly. This means whenever you're doing your end map, make sure you're scanning all ports. Yes, I mean all ports, all TCP, all UDP ports, you know, things like that. You don't want to fail your exam because you forgot to do a UDP scan. You know, even though this take a while, put it on in the background, just make sure it's actually running. You don't want to miss any of this stuff during the initial recon phase. Also, you know, for example, let's take a look at if you were to enumerate some sort of web server, right? You want to be very thorough. I mean, if there's a web server, you want to check the web server version, right? So, you know, Apache, IAS, whatever it is, what version of that is running? What version of the web application is running on that web server? Are there any plugins on that web application? If there are, what versions are those plugins? Is there a CMS on that web application? If so, what version is that running, right? So you don't want to miss anything. You want to make sure that when you're doing your recon, you get every little grain there is in there. Enumerate everything that's on the box because if you miss something and you can't get the exploit because you didn't realize that the software that was vulnerable was there, you're going to be very sad, right? You don't want to fail the exam because of that. Now, here is the thing that I think is the absolute most important thing to do during the OSCP exam, and that is taking breaks. I know it really sounds counterintuitive at first, right? You're thinking, I'm already in a timed exam. I only have 24 hours to do this. Why would I take a break? And, you know, it really can help to walk away for a little bit just to clear your mind, because if you go at a problem with a clear mind, you're going to be much more likely to solve it. So instead of spending another hour going down the same exact rabbit hole you're going down, take a 15 minute break, right? If you get stuck, just go outside, take a little walk around your house, your apartment complex, whatever, just take a break. Go ahead, walk around outside and do something besides being on the computer and doing the same thing over and over again, right? So I think some good times to take a break, for example, are after you root a box, right? So say you know you just finished machine number one and now you're going to move on to machine number two well maybe just take a little bit of a break right so a lot of people will tell you oh do all your recon at once run all these automatic scanning scripts and this this and that personally i don't really believe in doing that um you know i i didn't do that during my oscp exam the strategy that i would follow is say you know i rooted box number one i'm about to do box number two all right so now that box number one is done let's start all the enumeration processes for box number two, right? So you're like Nmap, Nikto, Durbuster, whatever you're going to do, right? Start all those scripts and then just go take a break. Walk away for 10 minutes. Come back. All your enumeration is going to be done. You can go ahead and do some manual enumeration now. And you're going to be going at this box with a clearer mind. Also, if you're stuck in a rabbit hole, right? So if you've spent half hour, one hour chasing the same exploit and nothing's working, I don't know if it's going to work in the next hour, right? So take a break, walk away and come back and maybe try a different method, right? Also, you know, again, if the exploit's not working, same thing, right? Go ahead and take a little bit of a break. Also, uh, after you hit that 12 hour mark on the exam, your mind is really gonna be like mush. I mean, you know, when I, I started at 6 a.m. and by the time 6 p.m. came along, I was like a zombie already. Uh, luckily for me, uh, by that 12 hour point, I already knew I had enough points to pass the exam, so that was very reassuring, but, uh, by, by that point, I was really struggling, you know, I mean, I was drinking all sorts of energy drinks and coffee and things like that. I had, you know, like loud, upbeat music playing to keep me awake. And I just, I wasn't able to think straight after that point. And I found myself taking breaks every 45 minutes to an hour. And, uh, also, you know, if you go to eat a meal, right, if you're going to eat dinner or breakfast, whatever the time frame allows, uh, go ahead and take a 30 minute break for that. There's nothing wrong with it, right? Um, you really want to be making sure that, you are spending your time in the exam as wisely as possible. And sometimes that 15 minutes away could save you 30 minutes of struggling on the box. And if you keep doing that over and over, it's actually going to save you a lot of time by taking those breaks. So let's talk about rabbit holes, right? Uh, we all know that there's going to be a lot of rabbit holes on the OSCP exam, right? There's going to be all sorts of crazy services running uh, with all sorts of, you know, wacky ports open and things like that. And a lot of times it could be hard to know what path to take and you will at some point find yourself going down the wrong path. That is a given. But 
the thing is that you really need to understand when you need to get out of that rabbit hole and go try something else, right? So if you've been chasing the same, you know, maybe it's a, you think there's a SQL injection or something like that, and you've been chasing that, you know, for 30 minutes, and you're not getting anything working, go ahead and try something else, right? You can always come back to this method, but it's always good to take a look at something else. You don't want to get fixated on this one point, right? You don't want to think, I know this is a SQL injection, or I know, you know, this version doesn't exactly match, but I want this exploit to work. Just go ahead and try something else. You can always come back to that method if you think, you know, later on that it is the intended way, but you don't want to get stuck doing the same thing for three, four hours with no outcome. It's just going to be a big waste of time. And if you are running some sort of exploit script or something, and you really think it should be working and it's not working, don't be afraid to reset the box, right? You don't want to lose progress just because something got glitched with the box and, uh, you know, just a reset would fix it. So don't be shy with using those resets. I know they give you plenty during the exam. All right, so once you've done all this stuff and you're in the, you know, final hour of the exam, you're pretty much going to know whether you passed or failed score-wise, right? So, you know, if you're at... 50 points, it's going to be very hard for you to gain the, you know, the remaining 20 you need to pass in the last hour. It's not impossible. Definitely do not give up. But if you've already gotten the 70 points that you need, then there's some things you should do just to ensure that you've actually passed, right? You don't want to end up forgetting something and failing because of that. So what I would recommend doing is for every box that you have, you know, rooted or got user on or whatever, go ahead and trace your steps just from the notes that you've taken. You should be able to fully compromise that box just from the commands and things that you have written down in your notes. If you can do that, then you know you've taken adequate notes and you know that you're going to be all set to write the report. By the way, if you're nervous about writing the report, go ahead and check out this card that's going to be popping up now. I've done a whole video on uh, some advice to write the OSCP exam report, so go ahead and check that out if you're nervous for that. Also, you need to make sure that all of the flags that you have captured, you have written down in your notes and you have submitted through their web portal. So, you know, make sure that you are actually getting those, you know, user.txt or proof.txt, whatever they are. Make sure that you have those. Uh, once you're doing the exam, you don't want to forget to grab them. Same thing with screenshots, right? You really can't have enough screenshots, especially in your notes. You can take a million screenshots if you want to. It doesn't mean you have to put them all in the uh, exam report, but it's better to have too many than to not have enough. So in that last hour, if you already have enough points to know that you've passed, just go ahead and solidify that victory, right? Make sure you go ahead and trace your steps, have all the flags and have all the screenshots and things like that. So that's really all the advice that I have for you for the OICP exam. If you've been going through the PWK labs or you've done a lot of hack the box, you probably already have the technical know-how to pass the exam. It's just going to be a lot of these mental challenges that are really going to be a hassle for you. So I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please remember to like and subscribe down below. I've also done quite a few other videos to help you with OICP preparation. So go ahead and check out the playlist that I have made for that on my channel. If you have anything else that you'd like to see, please drop that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.